welcome to Mysterious Labyrinth, a broadcast. Uh, just uh, I dedicate this broadcast to Steve Tour Goose. Just watching his latest video, just came up in the feed, just finished watching it. So, um, you know, this is a hangout. Um, I've posted the link. If anyone wants to join, I'll probably just be sitting here playing a bit of guitar as I'm still, um, I'm still very um, moved. Um, I feel very moved by what I just experienced. So, uh, and also uh, before, I'm trying to find the words. Uh, not only do I feel deeply moved, uh, but uh, it goes deeper than that. It goes something. Um, so I dedicated this to um, Steve. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, maybe sometime uh, if you, if you ever get to listen to this, uh, Steve, <clears throat> uh, maybe we will be able to talk with each other sometime. I'm hoping that can happen. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm, or I'm hoping that if that ever happens, that it should be pretty obvious why. If and when it ever happens, I think it, you'll see why. Of course, I'm not going to go into detail here in public. Uh, so I'm just going to sit here anyway, play, try and play a bit of guitar. I've got a broken finger, two joints, stuck my finger in the spokes. So I'm still trying to play the guitar, but you know, because whatever, uh, whatever. I used to play a lot of guitar. Right now, let's um, oh, make sure about the sound settings here, which I have to remember to change. Let's
sitting here playing the guitar, hoping for somebody to hang out with. And if somebody wants to hang out in private, and draw him private, well I can do that. or something or whatever but uh, uh, I can understand that there's no interest for it anyway so I'm just gonna sit here and just vegetate like a vegetable that's probably what we're all becoming isn't it a bunch of flipping uh, well, there's nothing wrong with vegetables I prefer the original ones myself you know before they started messing around with it 
on our behalf. Seems to be too difficult again for people in general to fathom. Well, luckily some people do still have a nut to use. <laughs> we're, we're, we're sitting in a global dictatorship and uh, if you step out of line they're going to they're going to be coming in to do their behavior modification behavior modification is included in the sustainable development goals I think it was 17 of them I was looking at earlier today. I've, I've, I've glanced through them before. Behaviorism, behavior, sort of behavior modification. I tell you, those who are actively, uh, those who are actively working for Agenda 21. and expect people to modify their behavior so as to fit into that box well you can see how far you're going to get if you try coming around here to modify my behavior because I ain't doing anything wrong you see but then they use the great the so-called greater good don't they? They use the so-called greater good to justify this ridiculous nonsense. Oh, they're so good at programming. Yeah. The masses, social engineering, there's the catchphrase you needed. join in if you feel like it. So, uh, it's dedicated to Steve Tor Goose. <sighs> well, what's this red balloon coming up? Any responses to anything, really? Oh, 
Yes. There you go. Some people don't know what sarcasm is. Okay. Well, some people just don't understand sarcasm, do they? Sometimes, I mean, you know, English sarcasm, it can get a bit over the top as well. Sometimes, you know, especially if you're not in the mood for it. But then if the joke isn't understood as a joke, it can sometimes turn into a lot of trouble. <sighs> Trying not to let my life turn into a bad joke it really basically already is on so many levels pop in have a look and then go away again because this isn't this isn't some uh, decorated uh, scripted load of plastic, you see. So it probably doesn't appeal to you, does it, out there? Your plastic spoons. But then we're all being turned into plastic in mind, one way or another, aren't we? Plastic. Plastic. Artificial. <laughs> the artificial construct. How can something artificial replace nature which was already perfect? Wasn't it? Wasn't nature fine as it was? That's my opinion. But it really it was perfect as it was. So when people talk about change, also without necessarily specifying what type of change they mean, they're just ranting on change, 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 the century of change. I would like to remove the change and just le go back to to uh, nature in many in most respects uh, freedom from this global mafia and it must be stopped now this agenda 21 must be stopped that is my opinion one way or another and I'm not suggesting violence at all but I mean, one way or another, we have to <clears throat> stop this madness. It's gone too far already. And some of us can see very clearly where it's going, as they spell it out for us. And yeah, going back to nature, but then they've hijacked that too with their environmentalism. Their so-called environmentalism lining their pockets as they trying to tax us for the very air we breathe that was a joke when I was a young lad oh yeah man one day we'll be paying for the very air we breathe well interestingly enough a fellow recommended a movie for me that I was amazed I'd never seen before because I, re I really enjoyed that movie that he recommended to me and I think it was from 1986, it's called The Arrival. <laughs> Interestingly enough, even as far back as 1986, and, and probably I've seen evidence of from before then as well, uh, where they're talking about global warming and carbon. In a 1986 science fiction movie. Which I thought was brilliantly made. And I really enjoyed it. 
So thanks, and you know who you are, uh, for recommending that movie. I was amazed I hadn't seen it before. In fact, I'd seen maybe a clip of it somewhere, but I'd never seen the whole movie. So that was the mo that was exactly the movie I because I've seen all the, I thought I'd seen all the ones I wanted to see you know because most of it so if I watch a movie today it's just to see what they're programming the masses with as everything that moves is embedded either with uh, vaccine propaganda zombie vaccine propaganda and other types of programming embedded in every in just about every single movie that they give out. I mean the main, you know, the big funded. Yeah, well, I don't know why, but uh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna frickin' post this uh, hangout link everywhere then, and then maybe I'll increase the the chances of someone actually hanging out. And I tried this yesterday. Uh, okay, I'll just go totally ape shit and then, and then just uh, plaster it all over the place. There you go. Now they're probably going to prevent me from doing that. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, what if I go to the post um, uh, where I was earlier, and then I'll drop in the um, uh, the, um, the thing. If he turns up, then I can go go off air and stuff. He fancies that. I mean, I wouldn't blame him for just totally ignoring the, uh, ignoring it. But whatever, uh, it's something I felt like doing after I watched his video. So he might not feel like coming here, like instantly to hang out or whatever. The person I'm talking about, so or the human being or whatever person. Oh, even that word is, uh, is has connotations, doesn't it? Persona, the mask. Uh, I mean, you, Steve. Uh, I'm trying to find the post you made. I'm going to post the hangout there. Who knows, somebody might actually come and hang out. So let's see. Um, I have to scroll for three hours now to, to find it. Where's it gone? Oh goodness gracious me, and I try scrolling and it jumps like my mouse is up the spout. <laughs> uh, sometimes I just want to trash this technology, I just want to uh, put my fist through it basically, quite frankly. Because I, I don't want to live my life staring at the screen, you know. I'm becoming a machine too. If I sit here much longer, I'm going to become a. Well, the screen starts because uh, gradually it comes towards you and it becomes a wraparound as you get your goggles. And then you can't see the room surrounding you anymore. And then that screen actually becomes operated into your body as you become a cyborg, you know, because that's the next step, isn't it? When I was younger, there were still signs of uh, real culture, which are dwindling by the day. Even some of the great uh, Roma musicians that I so much respect have, have sold out to uh, plastic, uh, the plastification of music. Well, they get paid for it. I don't blame them, you know, because uh, maybe they're, hopefully they're using some of the money to help the Roma population around them, which I'm sure they are, in one way or another, but you know, all this hoarding megalomania. I couldn't, I couldn't begin megalomaniac even if I tried. I mean, I, uh, even when I've been half broke myself, I'm giving my money away to people who need it more than me on the streets. Because I know, I know, I've got the gift of the gab, I know how to speak Norwegian, some of the people who are holding out the cup on the streets, they don't know, so I give it to them. I even go, yeah, I can't even afford to uh, feed myself, but when you realise that there are others that have it even harder than you, what are you supposed to do, ignore them? You can't ignore them. I mean, I can always pop that, you know, give away my money and I can go and get a loaf of bread at the Sally Army. Hey, there's something, there's actually something going on here. Hello. Hello. 
Wow, you, yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. By the way, we are on air, as you probably already know, because you're an yeah. expert. <laughs> Welcome to the Mysterious Labyrinth Experience, or something like that. How's it going? <laughs> Uh, just got through through rain. Rain. Hang on, I better put the. I, I better swap my um, sound settings to the to the speech thing. Okay. Cool. That is now done. Otherwise, uh, hopefully, you won't be getting any feedback or anything like that. You might be able to hear a difference from before. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> good now. Cool. Great. And thunder, lightning, and heavy rain. So it lasted ten minutes. Woo. <laughs> Wow, I, I noticed, I was just watching a Steve Torgoose video that he just put out there. Uh, yeah. I was just looking for the, the post again. Uh, in fact, I just want to, uh, yeah, because I, I was hoping to, uh, you know, he might not turn up or want, I feel like turning up in the Hangout, but at least I'm putting it out there. Uh, yeah. And thanks for turning up to the Hangout. I was starting to get lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm thinking, crikey, does this thing even work? You know, am I doing it right again and all that? You know, and, uh, it worked. It worked right. Yes. So, yes. Right. And I managed to post the right link for a change. Then, uh, yes. Yes, it was right. Yeah. I'm getting there. I'm yeah. getting there. <laughs> so, uh, let me see. Just see if I can. I'm scrolling down to see if I can relocate his post, but it's done. Uh, it's done. Um, it's disappeared. Which <laughs> one was it? Uh, uh, he he is a forty plus minute video. Here, I got the link for it. as on YouTube watching videos. It's right here. Hang on, I haven't watched it yet. So right, right. Yeah. Uh, it, it kind of uh, moved me. Uh, his video just moved me really there's deeply. The, there's the there's the link to the video anyway. So uh, thanks, thanks. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll oh yeah, but I. Ah, uh, that's just it. I don't want to post a hangout on the YouTube. That's just it, isn't it? So I'm trying. That's why I'm trying to. Uh, uh, well, I didn't think of that. Yeah, I, that, I did think of that. In fact, uh, that's why I'm looking it for uh, for it on this Google Plus page. Yeah. Uh, because then I can post the hangout because I posted the same comment there as on YouTube. But yeah. if I post a hangout link on YouTube, I, uh, I might be asking for. <laughs> I don't know what. Well, it's pub. You shared it public too, so yeah. Oh right, oh, I have done you that. Got you got the cameraman app that you know I installed that right now, just in case. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll have to look yeah. into that afterwards, I guess. Uh, yeah. I have no idea what that is. I haven't understood that's, it. That's the lifesaver. Yeah, I've got porn bombed and had to boot people before, so. Oh my god! Yeah. So that, 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 that's it's called. You're saying it's called the cameraman app. Is that something some yeah. can press here? Uh, oh yeah, there it says camera cameraman. Yeah. Okay, open. Yes. yes. Opening cameraman. Okay, so. Oh, and it's all in flipping Norwegian. I know this whole hangout's in Norwegian, so. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I speak Norwegian, yeah. but I, you know, I'm. I don't even really like reading much in any language because I prefer just just, uh, just uh, communicating with the voice, you know. But, uh, uh, yeah. Hang on, I'm just, I have to figure out. When your guests blah blah, will you cut the sound and hide hey, the video? You know oh, that. Yes. Yes. Oh, 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 oh! I see. So I want to cut them off. Do that, or you know, like that you'll have the control to boot them out at the hangout. Right, so that's a yes, is it? Uh, I yes, mean, what happens if someone can. comes in and I don't want to cut their sound? Oh, oh you can you can let them out the box, yeah. yeah right, right. Say, it's just to yeah. unmute them. I probably just get a little red microphone in the. In it, it says it says present. It says hide from broadcast, present, and all that stuff. Okay, and then there's the but, you know they'll come in and their box will be grayed out and nobody on the live can see, and you click the little. Uh, little uh upside down triangle there and it'll pull up the options to show in the broadcast and everything so right what about the other two what do you usually do with the other two uh what are the other two i can't remember Hang on. Uh, uh oh yeah let me just uh I'm, i'll try and figure it out uh, will that no i'm having to translate from the widget there will the big video i see broadcast be broadcast to your public your public and shall the other video streams be hidden 
shoot the other. Well, you, want, you want people to see who's in your broadcast there at the bottom. That's what that means. If you click the one just to show the one big screen, whoever's talking, you know. Right. As they're talking. So, is that, so in other words, if I press yes there, then the person who's talking is going to get the full screen. Yes. Right, right. So I'm going to do a yes on that too. That sounds like a function. Uh, Makes sense. No, actually, no. I mean, oh, no. you want people to see who's here, I think. I uh, think. Okay, okay, I'll leave it on no. I think, I'll leave it on no. I think, I'm sorry, I'm, I think it's a <laughs> uh, Should new guests in the, bi in the big broadcast three on... Mm -hmm. Get my yeah. If there's more than three in and more comes in, it automatically mute them when they come in. Right. So. Well, now I've done that. And I have to test that yeah. out. Do you know? You know, after that, <laughs> my chess rating has gone down about two hundred and fifty points. But that's because I've been ill with this asthma and allergy again. I'm fine today. Uh -huh. It's raining that's today, good. so there's no there's no pollen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and I, I think. You know, and I tried playing chess, and then my mouse started going up the, the spell. So, and then I tried playing some more chess, and I thought, right, right now I'm making a comeback. <laughs> and I went even further down. I thought, oh, all right, that, <laughs> that's a message. That's a message to you, David. Stop playing games. Yeah. I've gotten enough <laughs> nut, nut exercise. It's it's an overdose of chess, you know. Yeah. So, um, no, but then you then you suddenly end up trying to pull yourself away from the screen. And then bang, yeah. reality hits you again, and you go, "Oh right, now I remember why I was playing chess because I didn't want to look at that," <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Crikey. Mm. Anyway, I managed to get hold of some food today, so and then my payout is possibly coming on Friday. So um, yeah. I'm just surviving at the moment. Just having food was great, just fantastic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <sighs> <laughs> How's it going on your end? Anything exciting you care to share? Or, uh, I had to take one of the kids to the. I had to take one of the kids to the dentist today. Yay! <laughs> right, right. Yeah, that's a, I got a bag, uh, a bag from the Sally Army of, of sort of like modern toothpicks. It's probably embedded with some uh, genetic uh, sterilization agent for all I don't know, but I'm going to have to try one anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm not having any more children anyway, as far as I know. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. You know, there they are. There they are. You know, uh, they want to make sure we're all sterilised and stuff. But um, oh yeah. But uh, you know, they. Yeah, I I wouldn't. I don't think I want to bring many more children into this world anyway. So I don't know. No. I don't know. I, I'm a bit ambivalent. I, I don't think I have any willing uh, victims to have children with <laughs> anyway. Because <they're> <laughs> <laughs> three's enough for me too. Uh, three. Hey, look at this. It's it's. This is a toothpick, and it comes in its own plastic casing. This is uh, yeah, I've seen them. That's crazy. <laughs> but I, I it's sanitary. Almost... It's sanitary. Uh, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like look at this. It's got this little brush in it. Okay, now uh, oh, actually, I'm probably chipped now. Now I'm putting this in my mouth. I'm getting, <laughs> uh, I'm getting like genetically modified. Uh... Hey, this works. It's probably going to save me a lot of toothache because I can't eat anything without getting a freaking toothache, you know, almost, you know, because yeah. I've got no, I've got no teeth, uh, they're all falling out, you know, well, you can't see them that light anyway. Hey, that, <laughs> that is the business, the, cheat, the, the, the bee's knees. No, I was, uh, uh, yeah, you haven't seen um, his last video, but I kind of, uh, the more... I ain't been home long, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, let's just say, I've, again, I mean, I found myself even more... Uh, similarities with the guy uh because i'm also one of those that's swiveling out in the woods alone and the reasons why one's that one ends up in those woods alone but uh anyway he's not here so i don't want to talk about him behind his back or anything <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but um yeah no I, it was again it's something that resonated with me and uh almost getting flipping emotional myself again so but well, i'm an, an emotional sort of guy so uh yeah, I was just looking, um, I think maybe it was you that posted something earlier that reminded me of the sustainable development goals. Was it something you posted? I don't know. It could have been. There was somebody posting some some video around here somewhere which reminded me of that. I don't know. No, I don't think I posted. I only posted one or two videos, I think. I don't think it was me. Oh, it was a music uh, video I posted, too. Hang on. 
Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to do sustainable SDTs or something. Uh, yeah. Open a new window and, and, and remind myself yeah. what that sustainable development goals. Okay. And just to remind myself, what it was, I'll come with a comment. Yeah, I was going to come with a comment for that. I think there were 17 of them of the main ones. Yeah. Talk. So yeah, yeah, they've got all their selling points. Uh, oh, I'll just point, uh, post this. Uh, is this? Yeah, this is United Nations logo and everything. So this is straight from the horse's rear end. Mm. And yep. where's the chat? Where's the chat? There it is. Uh, post that in there. And uh, let's have a look. And poverty in all its forms everywhere. Oh, where have we heard that before? Um, oh. <laughs> end hunger achieve food security and improve um, nutrition yeah yeah you do, yeah and I've promote, seen all that stuff, yeah promote sustainable agriculture anyway there was a couple of that I really wanted that, that stood there's a couple that stand out for me um and I'm not sure if it says it in the same way here as in the uh the uh kind of uh presentation yeah. i was looking at a moment ago because they, they, i think they added a bit to it but it was yeah. uh was it seven no it was something about behavior modification so you know basically they're just telling you in so and so many words that unless you comply we are going to come and modify your behavior that's a sound is there someone else coming in no right hey. So, so I was thinking, you know, come here and try modifying my behaviour and see how I can. <laughs> <laughs> They're always trying to modify us, you know. Yep. No, uh, yeah, I was, th I was thinking about Steve's video, and uh, it's been raining a bit here today. And uh, in his video, it was uh, it looked like it was raining in Germany too. Mm. And uh, what he walk? What he walk? Um, I kind of picked up the guitar, found out that I'm not in the mood for playing the guitar either. Uh, so I thought just sitting here, maybe eating something eventually, um, hoping for a hangout to happen. Uh, eventually, I've got someone to hang out with. Um, um, uh, I was just uh, another thought that was in my head again and again and again is how how to stop the madness and uh, actually um, I, I still believe that actually speaking directly to people because I've been speaking mm. you know mentioning it ever since I moved here this that and the other and now people are actually yeah. you know, down at the Sally Army some people are actually going hey maybe he's, he had a point there and they, they a couple of maybe done a few searches and stuff and. Yeah, they seem to be taking a few of the things I said more seriously. So I thought, wow, you know, that's that's um, that's a sign of hope. So um, yeah. let's yeah. not forget yeah. about signs of hope, you know. Right, right. Well, I was doing some research today. I was looking at uh, Peru in Peru. Uh, the you know they had the ele presidential election there, right? Ah. Pedro Pablo Kaczynski. Okay. Okay. That's, that is a Jewish, that's a Jewish last name, by the way. His uh, he's Jewish on his father's side and Christian on his mother's side. Okay. If that matters to anybody. But anyway, uh, he held positions at both the World Bank and the IMF fund uh, at the IMF before being designated as general manager of Peru's Central Reserve Bank. He later served as Minister of Energy and Mines in the early 80s under President. Fernando Terry and as Minister of Econo Economy and Finance and Prime Minister under President Alejandro Toledo in the 2000s and they migrated from Germany in 1933 his family did they're 33 wow. <laughs> he sorry. went to yeah he's uh, he, let's see where he went to school and <laughs> you'll love this uh, he received his early education at Markham College in Lima, Peru, Rosal School in Lancashire, England, 
where he was a pupil in Maltese Cross House between 1953 and 56. Right. So an Exeter College, Oxford in uh, economics, philosophy, and Princeton. <laughs> oh, there as well. Yes. Oh, no, it's it's yes. one, uh, as, was it George Collin who said it's one big club and you ain't in it? Or right, right. No. and also a regional, he's in, okay, yes, fuck, hang on. He began his career <clears throat> at the World Bank in 1961 as a regional economist for six countries in South and Central America, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic. So, uh, but yeah, <laughs> lovely, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. I'm going to definitely uh, uh, try and remember to have a look at uh, that more in detail afterwards. Uh, maybe I'll even yes. with, uh, with my um, limited. Well, I mean, it's not too bad. My Spanish still. I mean, it's been a while. I'm a bit mm -hmm. out of practice, but uh, I can always go and find something in Spanish as well. But, yeah, uh, yeah. And he appointed his um, he appoints his campaign manager, former J.P. Morgan investment maker Alfredo Thorne, as his finance minister. Oh. Regional leaders and the Obama administration offered congratulations. Of course, uh, it it seems like um, it seem well. It, it's very obvious that I mean, uh, yeah. they move the 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 you know the major pieces on the chessboard, the background. Uh, you know, not the pawns. Uh, I'm thinking of, well, the pawns as well. But uh, yeah. even the major figures can be like put on. In different countries, yeah. uh, whatever suits the agenda, right. and uh, it's it's quite interesting to look at the the leading figures in South America as well. Very, yes. very revealing. Yes. We had Chavez, yes. who yeah. uh, I'm I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure was a uh, Mason, and I mean he sits there and he, he sat there in his military garb as well, didn't he? Mm -hmm. and, uh, yes. Uh, you know, well, just a reminiscence of. Uh, dictatorships you know yeah. like they're all wearing the no, <laughs> yeah yeah no it's yeah. it's flabbergasting uh, and we was talking about venezuela there yesterday on a hangout and uh, i found this this morning in in starving medicineless venezuela supreme court blocks foreign help do you know i was uh, i was almost with uh, a very beautiful lady oh, venezuela I um, had a sort of um, we weren't we never re actually got properly together. It wasn't far from yeah. mind you. Um, this amazing girl from uh, well, lady, what, what she, she was a bit yeah. younger than me, uh, about six or seven years younger than me, but an amazing painter from and she was half native, uh, and yeah. half uh, her mother was French origin, is French origin. Uh, anyway, um. Uh, she told me a few things about Venezuela and stuff, but uh, in, in yeah. Venezuela they play uh, an instrument called uh, El Cuatro, which is like a little guitar with four strings on it. And there's a lot yeah. of percussive and rascuado technique, which is um, uh, very similar to, well, some similarities to flamenco guitar technique as well, although the rhythms are completely different. And uh, But I've, I've been listening to some Venezuelan music, a real virtuoso uh traditional music there which is uh, which is great uh, and I really enjoy it uh, and they have a dance in um, a kind of a dance tradition called Joropo uh, yeah. uh, in, in Venezuela uh, no no yeah in Colombia and in Venezuela I think in both of those countries maybe other places as well I'm, I'm no expert yeah. on it but uh, yeah, uh, just to uh, mention that, you know, <laughs> got to mention some <laughs> traditional music, you know, when they're throwing this plastic synthetic music at us all the time, you know, I try to kind of yeah. uh, mention a couple of uh, real traditions, you know, that's worth going uh, to experience either yeah. on that or in real life. And, uh, okay, Bill. Uh, so Venezuela, yeah, I mean, also, the, um, the Jesuits' involvement in South America has been extremely profound. And I was, uh, hey, that could be a thing uh, that I, I keep forgetting to do is to share that um, documentary I have. I think it's from Bolivia. I've got it here. Uh, but I, I'll do a separate broadcast on that eventually. But, uh, yeah. Um, 
I was listening to, uh, I did post Alan Watt, uh, the Alan Watt new video from Sunday, where he's talking about his frequency, uh, yeah, frequency weapons, if you like, or, or well, things of that nature, you know, how, how the human psyche can be affected, you know, they can, or, or they can make you physically, or as well, lethargic or animated, or da, 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 by broadcasting certain and directing certain combinations of frequencies at you and all that sort of thing. And I'm thinking, oh my god, you know, how how many examples uh, potentially have I seen of this in real life already? You know, and uh, yeah, yeah, for a lot of people, it's far out, but in fact, the the technology, um, you know, you can find quite a bit of literature on it going uh, a way back. Uh, definitely an interesting video to, to um, although he has several things he points out. The thing is, on his website, he actually does give the sources for a lot of his research. So it's not just like hearsay. You, he'll actually post, um, I think it's called um, Cutting Through the Matrix, uh, Cutting Through the Matrix or something, a website called that. That's his website, if you can find it. There's some mirrored ones as well. So I think, oh, yeah. At least, um, at least you've got the um, the the uh, references references to uh, double check what he's saying, so you can actually go and see for yourself. You know, so that it's not just uh, uh, <sighs> yeah. So I was um, uh, last week when I was at the Sally Army. Uh, a short short visit there. Uh, very friendly bloke turns up. He's helping out there uh, these days. Uh, I hadn't met him before, although I may have seen him somewhere before. I think in Oslo, and he um, he says suddenly comes out of the blue. He says, "Yeah, now what? Uh, they're trying to int introduce a law, or they maybe already have introduced a law or statute, whatever it is." Um, that means that if you throw away food, you're going to be fined. And he, mm. said, and he said, yeah, this is a good thing. And I said, yeah. And I said, well, on the, on the surface, it might look like a good thing. But well, is it really um, addressing the root of the problem? Right. Uh, that's what I try. I try to say it to him along those lines, you know. And uh, uh, and I did actually inspire uh, some thought there because I could hear the cogs churning and his eyes were moving around and he was thinking, oh, oh, ah, yeah. mm -hmm. And I said, well, who's yeah. lining their pockets? Um, exactly. the people lining their pockets with this uh, are probably throw away more food than you and I ever yeah. have ever done in our entire yeah. lifetimes, you know. Oh, yeah. Rough estimate. So there was something, you know, that turned up, uh, and, and then there's this other thing. I uh, probably mentioned it the other day. That uh, it's like this uh, cabin community, and they're building all these these cabin yeah. uh, uh, stuff. It's all agenda. It's all connected to Agenda Twenty One. No surprises, and uh, cool. so supposedly sustainable, and but. But it's, uh, you know, if I want to go out into the nature, I'm not going to go to a colony, a cabin colony, and I like, sit there with a bunch of, col you know, like, they call it that here, right? They build this area with like, tons of cabins. They even have them on the outskirts of Oslo. There's a place called Sulavan Koloni Hagehit. Uh, yeah. uh, I was um, homeless many years ago in Oslo and uh somebody was kind enough it was cold at winter time you know it gets a bit tiresome in minus 20 degrees sometimes sleeping on a park bench so uh, if you can't find a sofa to crash on you end up on that park bench or, or just walking yeah. around all night but uh to keep warm but um somebody was kind enough uh to lend me the uh cabin right but it's in one of these uh like colony jobs yeah. and it's got like uh caretakers and uh they walk they go they do their rounds at night now you're not allowed yeah. to live there in your own cabin at the winter time <laughs> so Shit. yeah when it's when it's really cold when you need it the most you're not allowed to live in it and you're not allowed That's to crazy. use it so i mean she'd had that 
that cabin uh, for years, many, many years, as long as I remember, and uh, had a little garden there and everything. She said, uh, you can borrow the cabin, but uh, keep a low profile. And I thought, what's that supposed <laughs> to be? And I just kind of, uh, I just thought, I don't know exactly what you mean there, but I'm trying to imagine what you mean. You know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. I, I got to live in the cabin, right? And I'm there and I'm thinking, uh, right. Uh, so far, so good. I was there for two weeks. And then uh, the lady who lent me the cabin, the best friend of my mother, she said, uh, unfortunately, uh, they've told me that uh, you've been seen there and uh, I could lose my all my rights to have that cabin. Uh, so Jeez. unfortunately, I can't let you stay there anymore. And of course, I'm not going to stay there and, mm. and cause her to lose that cabin. So I just moved on. But yeah. um, I think it, it, it's incredible, you know. I mean, you've actually got a guard going around at night making sure that you are not staying in your own cabin. <laughs> And I mean, I'm, it wasn't even my cabin. I'm a guest there, but I mean, that's, mm. that to me is pure madness. Pure madness. Yes. 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 Becky's going walking Hello. with her camera. Yeah. Let's get, I'm get. on my laptop here, so. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, let's see what else we've got coming up here. Um, what was it? I'll tell you what. I'm just going to close that sustainable page because uh, <laughs> I, I I don't know how much more I can be bothered to think about that. Uh, Man, that, I've seen enough of that to last a lifetime too. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. We know what it's about now. It's pretty it, yeah. it's obvious and. Uh, those who want to know pdfs man i've got like i don't even know how many um, from that shit so uh me and delete so yeah <laughs> hey by the way uh, by the way uh that film that uh Jamer recommended yeah uh i hadn't seen it and it was a real cracker but guess what uh the arrival yeah yeah you've, you've seen it I've seen with, it, yeah. With, with Sheen and all that, yeah? Yes, and yes. Then, and then bending the legs backwards and stuff and hopping around. Oh, yeah. That yeah, was yeah, freaky, yeah. man. Uh, what uh, a brilliant film. I'm amazed I hadn't seen it before. Uh, I mean, uh, in fact, I've never seen a film with that I remember with Charlie Sheen in it before. So uh, finally, I got to see a Charlie Sheen movie. <laughs> and, um, uh, but guess what was incorporated into the movie? Global warming yeah. and, and carbon. That's right, yes. All the, way back in that, yeah. all the way back in 86 all the way back in 86 so there you yeah. go there you go yeah they're watching that new movie about the gods uh oh yeah get the name of it uh crap <laughs> anyway i can't remember it's, oh uh, has it got like gods in the in the name yes yeah. They're fighting and everything. To, yeah. Ah. It's got Gerard Butler in it, he said. I, I can't remember the uh, name of it. Um, uh, Gods of... I'll go in there and ask them. Duh. <laughs> no, uh, we'll find out what it's called. We'll find out what it is. Uh, and like you're like me these days, then, because I keep forgetting what I'm talking about in the middle uh, of that. Okay. Stuff, but... <laughs> I uh, can't even remember what I was talking about, but yeah, um, I like to catch up on some of the movies because because of you know yeah. we want to see what they're programming the masses. Yeah. One one movie that stood out for me was um, World War Z. World War Z. Yeah. Oh, the World War Z. The oh yeah, the zombie thing. Yeah, that, zombie what? vaccination thing. Oh yes, zombie World War Z. World War Z. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah. Say, uh, yeah. Like we say Z. You say Z. Right, right. right. I, should, yeah. I should remember that. I should remember that. But you know what I mean. Yeah. What, what World War Z then? Well, the big red yeah. Z or Z. Uh, yes. 
that was uh that yeah that was zombie um zombie vaccine propaganda in its purest form uh i'm one of many like like the walking dead <laughs> Right. Uh, TV show, you know, yeah, I used to watch that and then I got into this stuff on here. I'm like, whoa No, I, I can't I couldn't watch it no more, you know, like uh, several other shows. I used to watch I'm like man that Shit's just yeah uh, <sighs> This shit's going on in real life and they're putting it on the TV shows, you know So people will think that hey, it was on TV. That's not real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, that's a, a thought that has occurred to me too. That if you present something real in, um, in uh, as they often do, um, something that, in some many ways, may connect to reality, uh, but in a fictional form, and then people won't will never believe it's real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yep. Right, right. Like, like they done, like they done with the X Files. Here oh. they brought it, brought it back. Yeah. Somebody so. mentioned it might, might have been you. I, I can't remember who it was now. Somebody I usually remember who uh, my sources because I, I try to respect my sources yeah. where I got it from. But uh, it was yeah. uh, the new uh, series, and I found it on Pot Locker or something. Uh, some of the series, some of the episodes yeah. of the new one, and I thought, yeah. Somebody said you have to watch that. You have to watch that. And uh, yeah, I could see why they were suggesting it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I watched the first episode. That was enough. Yeah, you know, I'm like, uh, I can see what the rest of it's gonna be. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I watched also the first one and a little bit of the second one or something, and then I also left it there. I also left yeah. it right there. You know, I thought, yeah, how much yeah. do I have to see? Yeah. It's like watching the watching the video. I was watching a video earlier, an anonymous video, and it it's a good video. But you know, when not, when they showed Obama start talking, I had to cut it off. I can't. Oh I can't listen to the politicians, man. <sighs> So, yeah. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, the only time I ever really ever catch up with the mainstream, or uh, we've got a lot in common there. <laughs> I could, I could get this Obama <laughs> or or some president or whatever. I just oh, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna. I'm going to hear the script anyway through the masses afterwards. Right. I, I hardly yes. have to listen to the mainstream news at all because it all comes through, fed yeah. through. And I was, yeah, uh, it is. I was sitting up on the local extinct volcano just down the road here, yeah. uh, and I met some. Oh, they were nice people. Uh, they offered me a coffee up on. Uh, it was winter time when I was oh, up wow. on the volcano, and they had yeah. more coffee with them. I was just up there without anything. And, so I had a coffee and a chat, and uh, they asked me what I'd do, and I said, well, I'm a flamenco guitarist gone uh, internet radio. Um, yeah. And he says, well, do you, eventually he says, do, do you follow the news? I said, well, I am the news. <laughs> 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 oh, that's right. what I do, you know. I mean, so, right. I, uh, but, but, but it was the reasons he said that. I was thinking, you know, you, I don't think you quite fathomed where I'm coming from, mate, because if you're saying that to me after everything I've said already, and I don't think yeah. you kind of got it. Uh, it's, it's frustrating. Uh, it's frustrating because uh, uh, another certain person uh, I've been communicating with gets a lot of it, but then he's still um, he's still uh, going to channels like Alex Jones and uh, mm -hmm. all these uh, agents. Yeah. Well. Yes, yeah, I, I see a lot of people posting that crap, and I'm like, move on. <laughs> You know, I mean, it, like you said, it's what they want. That they put out what they want them to put out, not you know what we really should be hearing and talking about. So, yeah, yeah. Do you know? Uh, you, know uh, you know, of course, the movie They Live. Yes, that's a famous one. Um, you know, when um, that's what I was going to say to delete the other day because he he said something about something that reminded me of the when you see that guy on the television set in the shop window and then the yes. airwaves are interrupted and this face comes up and uh starts saying yeah. all these truths and stuff you know whatever it is he says you are yeah. a slave and you're being enslaved or right. whatever it is and i'm thinking yeah yeah that's a good one well what if we could just take over the 
the mass yes. media and so like, yes. oh, well, we are interrupting uh, this broadcast. <laughs> real... uh, yeah, that's uh, right. that's what you know. The anonymous op media control. I mean, anybody can do it. I mean, we're doing it right now by being on here and talking about the shit. You know, that's what the media is. It's us. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's you know, they just say whatever. Like I said, what they tell them to say. We're, you know, we, it's our own opinions, but, you know, it's, you know, we, you know, uh, it's more, yeah, you know what I'm trying to say here, I guess. I think I do, actually. We, uh, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I get all pink out here and stuff, so, sorry. <laughs> it's been a long day. I, I, I think I understand what you're saying. Uh, uh, it's, uh... Yeah, again, it, that like, it just it brings me back to speaking with people face to face. I, I also got very frustrated for years because I was trying to find a place to hold uh, like a, a lecture yeah. or something. You know, I hate yeah. that word because it sounds like I'm trying to be a professor or something. You know, <laughs> lecture, yeah. giving someone a lecture. I mean, I'm just <laughs> spreading info. Basically, I'm not sure. Well, anyway, but um, uh, there were several places, even like far lefty places, and uh, yeah, that totally ignored me. They didn't want to. Um, you know, I tried to get a place to hold the, the eventual lecture, uh, yeah. like with a, what do you call it, PowerPoint or something, presentation, yeah. uh, something along those lines, and uh, yeah. got turned down every single time uh, people would avoid me, and I'm thinking, oh, hmm, who are you really working hmm. for? And right. I moved out here to the country, same response, you know, if you're not, if you don't wave a, p a piece of paper around with some flipping uh, gold right. written on it, then, then they're not going to take you seriously, you know, it's, it's like, yeah. Uh, yeah. so, so, uh, so I ended up basically, uh, when I did my masses of research uh, about seven plus years ago, I did tons of research, uh, about 16 hours a day of it, uh, or 14 hours a day yeah. uh, on average or something, yeah. uh, for several months on psychiatry uh, psychiatrics and uh, uh uh vaccines and stuff things like that uh, yeah. then, then um you know seeing as i couldn't get anywhere to to pour out the information i uh, i was sitting on on buses on trains talking to people on yeah. buses and trains i even bumped and met some nurses on the train and <laughs> i was telling them things about vaccines that they, they weren't aware of i saw the one lady uh lifting her eyebrow brow up uh, she yeah. didn't agree with me to start uh, for starters when i uh, i uh, did try to specify look i can actually give you the source uh, of this information and where it comes from and blah 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 and i think i wrote it down for her i maybe yeah. she remembered it whatever uh <laughs> And then she started, uh, she did start to take me a little bit more seriously. And, uh, but it was like that, you know, going around on a bus, it bus stops, uh, trains, yeah. uh, anywhere really, just walking about, mm -hmm. talking to any Tom, Dick, or Harry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like today I went to my mom's and the uh, first thing out of her mouth, guess what it was? <laughs> that goddamn shooting. I was what? like, oh my god, that about that shooting in Orlando. I'm like, uh, did you even watch the news and see these people? They're not even crying. They're not even upset. I mean, they're acting. I mean, people probably really, people really did die, uh, you know. But because I seen one where they, they sh it showed them uh, they the news station interviewed this dude. I forget who showed the video. Damn it! But uh, um, this dude had called the radio. Or not ready the TV station and he was in there right okay uh -huh. <laughs> and he was saying that somebody was holding the door shut where nobody can get out click mm. they lost him right right so, right yeah I mean um, I'm still you know you know I how am I supposed to tell from here if anyone's died or not but then I will say that from what I've seen I I, I, I don't see anything any convincing evidence that somebody has died. I wrote that in the chat somewhere. I just removed the comment because I can't be bothered yeah. to uh, uh, get into right. arguments with people right. about it anymore. But, well, I mean, it uh, wouldn't surprise me, but, though, because they don't care to do shit like right. that. You know? but, but, but there was a response to my comment, uh, before I forget it, there was a response to my comment that was something like, uh, yeah, uh, pointing out the body bags. Okay, a bag is a bag. You might have a, a frozen right. sausages in there. It could be anything in there. Yeah, it could be anything, right. 
Yeah. Right. I, as of yet, I haven't seen any body bags either. And uh, yeah, uh, several actors, um, like mm -hmm. you already pointed out, the tearless actors. And uh, yes. Uh, no, I was just, uh, I did a search today on um, Orlando survivors uh, yeah. to see if I could find some more figures. There was um, some Afro-American lady who was allegedly shot in the side. Yeah. And while she's sitting there, being, she did, actually managed to produce uh, some tears, but uh, they cut off the camera first. And then suddenly when they put it back on again, then suddenly she had some, some wetness <laughs> in the eyes. Of course. Um, but uh, she was kind of yeah. she was kind of sitting in the in in, in an armchair uh, yeah. uh, or in a chair, and then um, she's she, apparently she's allegedly been shot through through here. She pointed at her side, right? Yeah. Uh, and what later on through the interview, she's kind of moving her leg around on that side, and and I'm thinking what? if I was. Uh, if I was had been shot through here, right? I yeah. would, I, I would probably be in agony, not be moving. lifting my leg because you're exerting uh, pressure. The muscles contract right. here as well. You're exerting. I would not even on your torso. I would not even want to be talking, man. What the hell? Exactly, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, I mean, I haven't been shot, but I mean, even with just. Uh, I know what it's like to get like a, a rusty nail through, uh, yes. pointing oh, yes. through my thumb. I mean, uh, 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 and that yeah. was excruciating for for some time. But uh, and other things that have been excruciating. And then you see this guy who's been supposedly shot in the leg. It doesn't even look like proper blood. Um, and he's being carried through uh, yeah. the street. And 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 it looks like his. You know, I don't know. Yeah, an ex another explanation for that might be that he's in shock or something, and then you might you might be like that anyway if you're you're yeah. in shock. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to think uh, how I reacted uh, uh, when they tried to shoot me uh, in the park, and um, well, I, I didn't actually get shot, luckily. But I mean, uh, I'm just thinking. Uh, I did have an, uh, uh, you know, I ended up going through uh, with my knee through the asphalt while I was trying to get away from them, and uh, mm. um, I'm just thinking, how was I in that situation? I mean, I was in pain. Yeah. I had to hop. I managed to get away from them. I hopping on one leg, I got away from these guys. Yeah. Freaking believe it. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and later on at the emergency ward, you know, because I went down to the emergency ward because my knee was bleeding all over the place. That was the last time they lured a vaccine into me. They lured a tetanus vaccine into me. Damn. Uh, which I was stupid enough to say yes to because that caused me a lot of health problems for some time. Yeah. Almost ended up, uh, uh, they were suggesting that I should be amputating my feet and stuff like that. That's how oh, bad uh, my feet were in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, personally, I s strongly suspect the tetanus vaccine. Um, Causing that. Anyway, I've done several yeah. de detoxes since then, and uh, I'm still alive. So, but uh, mm. at least I think I am. Uh, uh, like, <laughs> like, like Steve's <laughs> video. Steve's video today. It was called the ghost or something. And uh, sometimes I feel like a living ghost. You know, was, uh, am I really here? I mean, uh, uh, d d d d not literally, but I mean, I feel like um, yeah, in that I'm in this modern world that I'm the ghost of of what I could be if there was true freedom mm. uh, uh, no, if I go downtown and try playing the guitar these days they're probably you know I mean I've, it's always been there's been difficulties for buskers before uh, yeah. uh, throughout the centuries I think but 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 now they are deliberately cramping in on that as well. And if you if you if you try holding out, a, that's why. That is the point I didn't manage to finish the other day because somebody kept interrupting me. <clears throat> when I was trying, it wasn't you. Uh, um, when I was trying to make my point, people don't seem to get it that I actually uh, have. A, they don't get it that I'm in the middle of something and they uh, might actually have a point, and then they end up interrupting and I yeah. lose lose the focus. But hey, it happens to everybody. Yeah. yeah, and the point was, and it's a she. I've forgotten it already again. <laughs> 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 uh, sorry.
no, no, that wasn't your fault. I, I, uh, um, yeah, it was the. Um, uh, oh, t- <laughs> damn! <laughs> oh, God. No. No. I also felt a bit. Uh, I, I noticed that, that uh, Debbie put out a hangout one day and that nobody had noticed it. So, uh, and I was too late for it anyway, but I, I pressed the like button. So just to show that yeah. my presence was there or whatever. But right. so, so I was just thinking, yeah, trying to keep an eye out for those other hangouts too. There's seven new posts coming in. Wow. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> I know what you said about hell was live. You might be right. I, uh, you suggested someone else suggested. I'm not sure about that myself, but, um, uh, and, uh, yeah. I just, it just makes me laugh because it's just, I don't know. I just think it's a, a, a bit funny sometimes, but anyway, uh, um, uh, people keep saying, uh, ISIS Israeli, uh, secret intelligence service or something, but they forget about the Egyptian ISIS, which is yeah. an icon of Freemasonry and, uh, you know, yes. uh, looking at if you look at ISIS on a more esoteric level as well. Um, yeah. Yes, it's interesting that the Israeli um, uh, secret intelligence, whatever it is, is called ISIS. But um, there are also some other companies called ISIS uh, or have ISIS in the name that I came across. And, yeah. um, and then there's a, a, a book by um, Blavatsky called ISIS Unveiled. By Helena Blavatsky, the um, uh, New Age uh, esoteric author, uh, to find a description for a rough description there. Uh, not meant as a label, but uh, yeah, there's some interesting stuff she's writing. Uh, she was writing there, if she herself indeed wrote it. I mean, uh, we know they often use just front figures, you know. I mean, I. Uh, even uh, I've even I'm even wondering about Stephen King, you know, because uh, right. maybe he wrote all those books. So there again, maybe he's just a representative for a team. You know, mm. I don't know. It's a suspicion I have. Uh, yeah. It's, um, and when I saw, if you see a movie and it's very very long, called The Stand, it was a Canadian. Yes, record. I have. I yeah. have. Yeah, I've seen it and read the book. Yeah. Right, right. Yes, oh. right. <laughs> yeah, because there we go again. Yeah, another movie uh, depicting things as they may unfold. Uh, quarantines. Uh, yes. I, 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 I managed to listen to the uh, EV uh, video, a couple of videos I think he's come out with. I was listening to at least one of them anyway. Uh, the Experimental Vaccines channel. Uh, he uh, there it seemed to come through yeah that uh, already there's there's talk again about if you refuse the vaccine they will remove your welfare payout type of thing yeah yeah um so um uh, i haven't done any research on it it's something that i heard spoken about in one of these hangouts i noticed also that he was in a hangout ended up in a hangout with a john le bon who's a very, very yeah. sharp guy, but he just yeah. happens to be a flat earther. Yes. You know, it can be very impressive. He speaks very quickly. He's very sharp, but he's, he's doing that. He's doing the flat earth. So I thought, you know, um, I, um, I think experimental vaccines is doing a very good job. And uh, I wonder if he was aware of, ju- uh, of the, uh, a couple of figures, uh, to keep your eyes peeled on that he was in the hangout with that. So I wrote it to him as a, on, as a message, as a, as a, um, Hey, uh, our friend, uh, Nos- um, what did they- our friend, Nossi Dan is in the hangout. Yeah. Who? Sira oh, N- Eric's got one going and we've got a reality check going right now too. So, Oh, I don't know about reality. Yeah, show. I'm not sure. I Peter, know. Peter Howard, Peter Howard, and them. Hey, should we should we go and uh, visit? Um, is it is it Eric? Yeah. No, I'm a bit tempted to to see if it's possible to enter his hangout as well. 
Um, okay. I'm on the wrong page. Yeah, because I mean, he's put out a link. Maybe he'll be happy if yeah. he the visit in his hangout. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, oh, we've got a potential guest here. Uh, yeah, careful. <laughs> what? I've I'm never seen this person uh, before. So. I've never seen this person before either. I'm going to take a chance and unmute this person. How about that? Oh, right. Hello. I heard vaccines cause autism. Well, good. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people have, too. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try. Oh, triangle thing. How do I allow him in here? <laughs> it says uh, show and broadcast. All oh, right. Show and broadcast. And I'll try and unmute it him really as well. Is. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. They have yeah. to yeah. unmute themselves. Oh, I see. I see. Hello? I'm new to this whole uh, Google Hangout, so. Oh, well, cool. Well, welcome to, uh, it's just a spontaneous okay. kind of us. Um, I'm called Mysterious Labyrinth here, and uh, this is my guest, Becky. And, um, Hi. You know, um, I'm no expert at Google Plus either. I'm still getting the hang of it. Uh, you're interested in... Um, Questioning uh, vaccines, possibly. Well, this is the this is the thing I have. There's a video out there that's called Vax. I don't know if you heard of it or not. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of other controversy, like uh, documentaries out there. But for some reason, the movie Vax, they're taking a special interest with this, and it's getting literally banned all over the country. And my question yeah. is, is that if there isn't anything related to autism through vaccination? Why is it that they're going through so much trouble to try to keep this movie out of the public eye? Right, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, yeah. That's the sort of question I ask myself as well. Um, uh, but I'm also inclined to add other questions to it, uh, into the mix there. Uh, and that is, uh, one, uh, could be a sales ploy, you know, to get, it's a way of getting attention as well. You know, oh, we're not allowed to show it here. We're not allowed to show it there. And then people want to uh, get more and more curious. Uh, I did know uh, uh, one of the reasons I'm saying this is that I noticed that uh, in a Robert De Niro interview uh, that he stated clearly that he wasn't against vaccines or vaccination programs. Uh, it was specifically uh, some, uh, some. I think it, he was. I have to double check this, but it was more specifically. Um, because uh, allegedly his own child has all, uh, problems with or, or t autism yeah. related uh, yeah. symptoms and uh, yeah. uh, but but you know when you realize the world's a stage and it really is a stage um, I take uh, figures like like I mean Robert De Niro is a fantastic actor don't get me wrong I think he's a really good actor um, he should it, maybe he should be hired to, to do some of this crisis acting uh, they keep pumping out there because then it would be more convincing you know um, but uh, I've done a lot of research on vaccines going back a few years now about seven years and I got into a lot of trouble myself uh, literally a lot of trouble uh, uh, trying to disclose um, the information I was uh, attempting to spread or disseminate, whatever. And uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, even just looking into the history of vaccination programs, I, I would recommend starting at, um, at the 1918 uh, so-called Spanish flu uh, and, and the uh, story of um, how the military is involved. I've even found uh, further back in history, going back to uh, um, <clears throat> the um, uh, for, uh, the oral vaccines that um, you had to have in Denmark, 240 approximately 240 years ago, uh, you had to have that oral vaccine so as to be allowed to get married in the church. So already as far back then, they're they're going, oh, yeah, you can't have that if you don't take this. Right. Uh, and now uh, the theme is turning up the theme that I've been trying to which I've been trying to warn people about for years now is now coming more and more to the surface as in uh, 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 the forced vaccine scenario where they take your welfare away from you if you don't uh, accept the toxic vaccine. And for those of you who, who would question the toxicity of vaccines, 
Um, uh, you know, you might believe the official version. You might believe just uh, the story that's been given to you. If, if that's the only story people are going to listen to, then you're just listening to the salesman and, and the sales techniques uh, rather than... I mean, even just the simple act of looking at the ingredients of, of the vaccines. I mean, we're talking about genetically modified ingredients now. We're talking about thimerosal, which is uh, 49 point whatever percent mercury. Um, we're talking about, uh, uh, um, oh, I've got someone in the box here. Yeah, sorry, but I'm in the middle of something, so they're going to have to wait. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, Benny, cheers, cheers. Uh, I'll, I'll let you in in a sec. Um, oh, no. You're, oh, don't tell me you're a flat earther. Oh, no, he's got a flat earther. Right, you believe the world is flat? Do you know what I think about that? That's goodbye from me. I'm not wasting my time. If you're, uh, and the, are you a flat earther? I don't think he is. Well, it says no, flat he's earther not. on his logo. He's not. No, he's not. All right. No, oh, all right. Well, well, what, no, no. What, what, what? He says flat earther. Oh, right, right, right. It's my glasses. No, but it does say F L A T earther there in the yellow bl uh, square. Yeah, people actually, I mean, oh, it's really, it's in French, is it? Right, well, uh, <laughs> interesting sense of humor. <laughs> uh, well, I might let you in in a minute and I'll give you a chance, you know. If you do any flat earth on me, <laughs> then I'm going to have a fit foaming at the mouth. So, no, uh, yeah, but back to um, GXSR Baby. Um, that was my short response to you or my preliminary response to anything related to vaccines. Personally, uh, if anyone tries coming at me with a vaccine, they, um, they're going to either have to go away or face some other type of activity that, uh, you can leave to your imagination what that might be. Uh, so, uh, as we are being uh, uh, manipulated. Oh, he's on his wife's profile. Okay, well, happens to the best of us. Uh, at least you have a wife, you know. I mean, uh, my, uh, all the women I've been with, uh, they can't get out of there fast enough, you see. Well, uh, <laughs> when you're sitting in, in one room with your loved one and then you're in two different worlds, it only lasts so long. <laughs> Seeing as her father was a trained allopathic uh, MD, um, you know, it could only last so long if you believe in that uh, cod's wallop. So, uh, you know, we're, seeing, we're, we're programmed by birth uh, in a, an obligatory mandatory schooling system, an obligatory mandatory in many places military uh, service, and uh, you know, that's not freedom. That is not freedom, and um, <laughs> and they've got the uh, they're going to be trying to force other things on us as well. And if you don't comply, I mean, they're going to come in with uh, behavior modification programs to modify your behavior because you're not a being a good little slave, you know, so, you know, I'm ready, uh, you know, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, um, um, for anything uh, today, um, I always have been in one way or another because I've had a bit of an unusual life, but um, today, I mean, the way it's going, the, the, the road that, humanity is being led down and we're talking about a very real depopulation agenda here that they are making horrifyingly clear to us it's like like i keep saying it's like the twilight zone when you when you uh i can go and, right now for those who want to know and point out the places where and, and you don't even need to point it out because it's coming through your mass media as well where they are openly talking about depopulating the planet so it's not just the georgia guidestones with uh, some writing on a block of, uh, of slabs of rock or whatever in 10 different languages or whatever they've got there uh yeah. these are actual real themes that are being spoken about in the real world um uh, where we're supposed to believe that we are farting and uh, too much methane and breathing out too much CO2 and uh, w w apparently we are causing global warming apparently c farting cows are causing global, global warming according to this if you believe this science you'll believe anything I'll put it that way 
Anyway, uh, are you still there, GX, uh, GXSR? Yeah, he's still here. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still here. Just trying to figure out this whole thing. Have you had any experience with um, either receiving or, or trying to avoid vaccines, may I ask? Or, or, or is there anything that, that inspired you to... Was it, was it the vaxxed film that inspired you or that theme that inspired you to, to, to bring up the question about vaccination programs? I've heard about the dangers of vaccines about six or seven years ago. And uh, in the past, I've always gotten the flu shot. And... Just like clockwork, the I've always gotten the flu at least at once a year, and every time I gotten the flu shot, three or four months later, I've gotten the flu, and then when I started hearing about the dangers of vaccines, I stopped. I stopped uh, to getting getting the flu shot, and I haven't gotten the flu for the past seven years. Yeah, and it's and it's and it seems to me it's because I haven't gotten the flu shot. Yeah, and so that, that, and then I then I heard I about this. Uh, then I heard about this Vax movie, and like I said, it, it's I mean they're. they're they banned this movie. I mean, I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to have to wait to watch it when it comes yeah. out on DVD. But it just seems to me, from my experience, anyway, and from a little bit of research I've done, that vaccines do more harm than good. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, and one of the things that's difficult for pe many people to fathom is that, that harm may be being done deliberately. They have a very hard time believing that the doctors and nurses uh, that they've been trained to to have yeah. their checkup, you know, have your checkup, you know, and yeah. uh, this whole indoctrination uh, um, yeah. uh, that they've had around them their entire lives, uh, it can be a challenge to question that, you know. But, yeah. but when you look deep enough into it, I mean, what you were describing there, by the way, is a theme that I see around me all the time uh, throughout the last, uh, well, umpteen years. Um, it's mostly those who are getting the shot who are uh, getting more health problems. And um, I don't need any sheet of alleged statistics to be able to see what's actually happening. I mean, I know uh, the bloke, unfortunately, yeah. not with us anymore, but the bloke next door, um, he was the one getting the most problems with flu uh, and he was the only one taking the flu shot in that house mm. his wife wasn't getting much problem with the flu um, compared to him anyway and uh, uh, but he's not the only one um, uh, yeah it, it, I mean it's a long list of people I've come into contact with, with in the real world I'm more inclined personally also to believe uh, my own eyes, my own ears, my own experiences, rather than trusting uh, uh, second-hand uh, third-party information and stuff like that. And uh, I make an extra effort to, to keep my eyes peeled because uh, on, on those subjects. Because I, I, I became skeptical uh, about allopathic medicine uh, already very early on in life as I had to save my own life from allopathic medicine. Um, uh, repeated penicillin. Um, uh, oh, what? Well, forget. Uh, forgive me. I've forgotten how to speak English. Uh, repeated uh, administration of penicillin, uh, ventolin, becotide, which is a type of corticosteroid. Uh, um, a whole tons of different medicines. They were because I had uh, chronic bronchial asthma and extreme allergies and all of this, uh, which. Uh, Many of my health problems uh, came originally from the polio vaccine, which put me straight in the hospital fighting for my life uh, at the age of, what was it, six, six or something, uh, six years old, something like that. And, uh, um, you know, and <laughs> uh, recently I, I found out because my mother commented on a, on a, on a thread where... Um, she reminded me that they sent me back for a reduced. I mean, the first uh, time they let they allowed the polio vaccine, I remember them coming with a dirty grabbing needle, so shoving it in there. Next thing I knew, I was in the hospital fighting for my life. And then they they were so excuse me, mum, but that was really stupid. You you actually allowed me back for a reduced dose. 
I mean, you shouldn't have allowed me to have any dose of that. Anyway, uh, Jonas Salk uh, is an interesting guy to research. If you can still, I mean, if they haven't swept uh, the net clean of the, you know, because they're sweeping uh, things from the net by the day. But uh, Jonas Salk was a member of the uh, of a uh, um, kind of eugenics society there as well. Uh, he was one of the uh, designers of one of the polio vaccines that came out then. I think it was around the year 1976, where in the Americas you had a uh, a um, a propaganda apparatus, and you can still find videos of that on YouTube, uh, where they tried to claim that you got polio from swim from other p uh, children swimming in the same swimming pool, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of the people. Uh, a common theme in not just in polio but in tuberculosis polio and other uh, diseases um, a common theme is that the people getting the vaccine uh, or the disease that you're supposedly vaccinated or given immunity uh, to this that the other disease supposedly via taking that vaccine is the very disease you end up getting and uh, often dying from, as in, um, I think it was the tuberculosis uh, vaccines in India that many people have died from that. And more recently, there are people yeah. uh, in India having a lot of complications and very angry at a certain front figure called Bill Gates. And I certainly uh, yeah. am not very enthralled by that geezer either, uh, where, I mean, this guy says, it speaks openly about using uh, I mean, in one of his, I, th I think it's in a TED talk, which he helped to fund into existence, by the way, these TED talks, uh, <clears throat> um, where he himself actually uh, says, yeah, if we do a really good job on vaccines and healthcare or something along these lines, I mean, you can find, you can hear it from his own mouth on the tube instead of, instead of me trying to remember the quote exactly, but uh, then we can, you know, reduce the population by so and so much. I mean, he says it straight out. Um, and, you know, when you hear it, like I say, from the horse's mouth, so, or rear end or whatever, whichever end of the horse, yeah. we're inclined to, to um, take that more seriously. Uh, sterilizing agents in vaccines uh, is is a theme worth mentioning. Uh, personally, I think that if you want to um, suggest sterilizing someone, that it should be their choice uh, if they want to be sterilized or not. If you want to be sterilized, fine. That's that's up to you. You know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, whoever you are may be. Uh, but it really, in my humble opinion, should be your choice. And um, um, uh, which choice did the three hundred thousand women in Peru have, uh, who have now who now apparently can't have children because they've been vaccinated and sterilised? Mm. Yes. Yeah, that's the argument, and that, that's an interesting one. Um, uh, 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 GXSR is writing, uh, people argue that I'm putting other people in danger by not getting your vaccine. Yeah. Now, that, that's, that's like a you saying about the flu vaccine, you know, they make my two girls get theirs, you know, they got to go to that specialist every year and uh, they make them get the flu vaccine and, you know, they're the only ones in the house that got the flu vaccine and guess who was the only ones that got the flu? Exactly. There we go again. There we go. So, you I mean, know, I, I, I made them give them the ones without the mercury in it, but still. Right, right. You know. Right. I mean, even so, I mean, yeah, well, at least you avoided the mercury, and that's good to hear. And, but yeah. uh, even so, your, your system is being laden with toxins and with all sorts of. Yeah. Uh, stuff. So, um, uh, what? Uh, but I, I have a quick response to um, what the this what the yeah. GSXR was saying as well, and that is that um, this common theme that comes through. Uh, I don't want my vaccinated children sitting next to your unvaccinated children. Right. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So then, simple That's logic. Right, yeah. what, what was the point of getting the vaccine if it's not giving you immunity? Exactly. So if that if that vaccine was giving you in, uh, immunity, well, uh, then why should you be worried about who you're sitting next to? 
In fact, it's the other yeah. way around because you risk getting um, catching something from, uh, and it actually states it somewhere. I don't know if it's in the inlay. Uh, there's somewhere you can find the information where it actually states that you are uh, contagious when you get the yeah. vaccine. So anyone coming into contact, into close contact with that person risks also being infected by the vaccinated person. So that in my opinion, and I'm not going to pretend that it's not my opinion, I will say, state clearly, uh, absolutely clearly, that that is my honest and, uh, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't say this lightly. I've done enormous amounts of research. That's my opinion. You're entitled to yours, but it's, uh, and again, the common thing to say is do your own research, but it is a good thing to say uh, because don't, like, don't take my word for it necessarily. I try to give people a few pointers. I mean, it's been a while since I've done that research. I've been busy with other things too. So I'm sorry, I don't have a whole ton of links to drop in for you. Uh, I can certainly recommend giving uh, a, a experimental vaccines channel a listen. Yes. Because yes. he does have uh, a lot of, uh, he's more active than I am on, in that area. And he, yes. he, he, uh, he also um, shows his courses as well uh, of his Pretty research. Nice. So, I'll get the link for that channel and put it in the, or in the, the Google Hangout. Hangout. No, I can't put it in here. I'll have to put it in the Google Hangout box. So. Right, right. Great. So, so yeah, that's quite. I think that's quite um quite a thing to hear, and it's a common thing to hear that people who actually believe the propaganda without questioning it are going to suggest that I'm putting people in danger. Well, actually, I'm trying to uh, save your life, in my opinion. So uh, I, I've also had other people come back to me and thank me because um, they uh, um, uh, avoided vaccines and they did their own research and avoided vaccines and warned. Uh, there was a sister. I didn't even know who it was and she came out of the blue. She says, thanks to you, my brother is still probably still alive. And I thought, well, if that's true, that's fantastic. Uh, I mean, awesome. I think it has more to do with your own willingness uh, than me. I mean, I'm just a bloke okay. trying to say something. But I mean, uh, it's your own willingness that did it more than uh, I haven't gone around like saving people's uh, pulled anyone out of a river or anything. But um, I don't exactly feel like no hero, but let me say another couple of things, if I may, if you're still there, uh, since you are. Um, yeah, he And uh, that is that um, uh, when the World Health Organization's uh, pandemic, so-called pandemic level six, which is the maximum so-called level, uh, pandemic level, what was it, 184 cases, alleged cases, uh, that got them to to declare that pandemic six level. Um, you know, uh, uh, I, that's when I did, around that time when I was doing the most amount of research, I went in front of, uh, I live in Norway, and I went in front of the uh, Norwegian Houses of Parliament, uh, which is called Storetinger in Oslo, and I have, held a spontaneous rant regarding the dangers of vaccines because I was so pumped full of information. I'd done so much research. People showed an interest and it just happened to be at the same time when they were, were uh, it was the uh, just before the elections or something. And uh, You've got these uh, little huts along the main street there for each respective political party, you know, your left, your right, and all the bits in between and, uh, you know, all your different parties with their different propaganda apparatus. And, and I was uh, walking up and down there. Uh, many at that time were so concerned about the uh, swine flu, uh, what was it, H1N1 and uh, H, they say, uh, N that, uh, the different <coughs> H's and N's there coming out, uh, being thrown at us. Uh, what was it? I can't remember the codes now, H5 something. Um, the um, I held a kind of a spontaneous rant. I didn't have any propaganda apparatus i was just a bloke without a microphone just standing there uh and people showed an interest and i didn't expect to get that much interest at all uh suddenly many people gathered around eventually it was hundreds of people uh and then i thought oh dear i didn't want to attract that much attention because I'm, I, I have a very good idea what can happen if you attack because in the front in front of the government building there you actually are supposedly 
meant to have a permit or apply for a license or a permit to be able to demonstrate that or hold any kind of speech uh, in front of that building. Now, I attracted a lot of attention, and that was specifically regarding the vaccines, vaccination programs, and people came with questions to me because they could, they could probably tell I was full of information. Some would suggest full of something else, but uh, okay, I, mean, uh, I could even cite my sources and so on and so forth there off the top of my head, and it, it seemed to attract just more and more people and they threw these the one question after the other at me you know, they just happened to ask the questions I had the answers to and um, suddenly I realized when there were I don't know how many well maybe a couple of hundred people I don't know that's a lot in Norway if you attract that much attention in front of the main government building in Norway and I suddenly realized oh no right, and I just walked away and they looked a bit uh, bemused or I mean befuddled you know uh, um, why is he? Where did he go? You know, we were. I thought we were in the middle of something, yeah. type of expression. And I walked home, and I was yeah. living at the east end of the t town at that time. I was followed home by a black helicopter, but it wasn't very low. I mean, it was quite high up, but it did actually follow me all the way to my house. And that wasn't the only time. That was the first time I attracted the wrong type of attention. And uh, I've been lucky to be alive. Um, for you know, I can share for those who want to know. The rest of what happened to me since then, seven years have passed, it's amazing I'm still alive, uh, trying to expose yes, things yes. of this nature, but I've also been trying to expose the true nature of how the global uh, system works, so secretive societies, Freemasonry, things of that nature as well come into the picture. So. Um, you know, I've, I've really put my foot in it, but so I'm lucky to be alive every single day. I'm not going to start some sob story or anything. That's the way it is. That's just the way it is. That's the life. Uh, you know, I don't know. They might come here again tomorrow and that's the end of me. I don't know. Um, they've certainly had their go at me on several occasions. So, yeah, question mark. Yeah. Anyway, there's certain things I can't share live on, on the net. Yeah. So, I'm sorry. I, I was I was away for a couple of minutes. You said somebody's after you. Oh okay, yeah. Well, I was just saying that um, when I attracted a lot of attention, holding a speech in front of the um, uh, equivalent of the Houses of Parliament in Oslo, uh, and the par main Parliament building, Storatinga, it's called. Uh, I attracted more attention than I expected, and also the wrong type of attention, which I've had to contend with for about seven odd years now. Uh, black helicopters, and I'm not joking. And I've got, uh, or did have, uh, video evidence to prove it, which I used to show people who who would uh, uh, take the Mickey, you know, uh, say, "Oh yeah, why would they send black helicopters after you?" Well, for one thing, it started when I held that speech in front of the uh, Parliament building without a permit, without a license, and uh, that was the first time. And after that. Uh, I got involved in internet radio and was doing internet radio for several years or five or six years and uh, actually hit the number one spot um, with a station in Canada called Project Freedom on a couple of occasions. Uh, we actually went past Alex Jones and Glenn Beck. Not that this is a competition. That's not the. Re it's not a competition for me. It's about sharing information. It's not like uh, that's not the reason. I'm not mentioning this because I'm saying, oh yeah, I'm number one or something. No, that's not the reason I'm mentioning it. The reason I'm mentioning it is that I got to number one uh, for for a certain amount. You know, while the live broadcast was um, going, uh, and I double checked it because somebody mentioned it. Hey, we're at, no, we went past Alex Jones, and I went to the talk stream live thing to check if uh, what they were saying was true for myself you know and uh, there we were right at the top and I thought oh dear I'm not sure I really wanted to get that much attention because we had over 750,000 listeners and when you realize the amount of funding that goes into controlled opposition and I'm not one of them uh, you're also asking for it so I've been asking for it on several levels and uh, virtually getting it so I've got footage that I've shown people who disbelieved me after I've shown them the footage of the helicopters visiting me here between three and four in the morning and shining a spotlight on me uh, I was expected to, I was expecting you know on that clip uh, that I show, show, uh, was showing around um, while what that was actually happening uh, when I went out the door because I heard the helicopter coming I had my camera ready that time went out the door I was expecting them to either just blast me to smithereens or just escort me away, make me disappear or do something to me, but they didn't, nothing happened except for that they shined a spotlight on me 
and I think basically they were trying to scare me into silence and possibly well some other things going on as well that makes it more obscure uh, thing is I had the footage and disbelievers up the road who were laughing in my face uh, thinking that I'm a raving nut job so I took the footage and I went up the hill and I showed it to them they never laughed at me again so you can either believe me or not. I don't have, unfortunately, the footage uh, available. Uh, I may have it on a half wrecked PC over here, uh, but I'll have to uh, get out the hard disk and see if it's uh, it's there. Um, and um, that type of thing can happen, you know. Uh, so you know, <laughs> the powers that are uh, don't want people like me. Uh, challenging a multi trillion dollar industry actually I mean it's uh, we're talking every year hundreds of billions of dollars mm -hmm. as well but it's not just the money people often uh, in my opinion so you're like follow the money yeah money is a tool though it's the intention why why are they so insistent on getting that under your skin you know that needle so I have a question. Do you know anything about the relation between uh, vaccines and autism? Because the CDC claims that autism is caused by the mutations in the DNA, but yet there's a lot of people, especially younger children out there, that get diagnosed with particular cases of different types of autism yeah. later on in life. So my question is, is that if it if me if uh, autism is solely caused by mutations alone, why is it, are these children getting diagnosed with autism like later on in life? Yeah, uh, uh, with some forms of uh, vaccine-related damage, you have a delayed effect, so that that it's not necessarily all, always obvious that that the uh, undesired effect, as in autism is caused by the vaccine uh, sometimes it's more obvious because you'll get very dramatic uh, convulsions and, and spasms uh, on the very uh, the very moment of getting the vaccine and also you uh, got to take into account the GMOs and crap they put in their food too yeah so. no, because the attack is from like but brilliantly pointed out is coming from many angles isn't it um, yeah uh, I mean if, if GMOs were so great for us why did it have to be a covert operation you see, because we've been being fed GMOs for at least three decades now. And uh, they certainly went up front about it. So if it was so, if it's so great, you know, uh, I think nature was fine as it was. Vegetables knew how to grow. Nature uh, has, um, you know, it's fine. You know, they do the us. pesticides, you know, the, the Roundup and crap, you know, there's natural things you can use for that, you know. Exactly, but uh, back to the autism because I was just I'm trying not to forget the uh, question here and the, the autism related question. Uh, if you look at um, if you can manage to somehow or other, I wish I had the links for you now. Like I say, uh, if you somehow or another can look, find uh, statistics for you say because there weren't as, uh, there weren't that many vaccination programs going back compared to now. You know, going back a hundred right. years, and then you can see uh, how. Uh, autism uh, statistic uh, the rates uh, increase. Uh, uh, right. If I can uh, interrupt you here for a second, I, 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 have, I have a chart here. I have a chart yeah. here from the CD, uh, uh, or the CDC, and in nineteen it says here in nineteen seventy five, one in five thousand people our children were diagnosed with autism. Then it shows nineteen eighty five, one in twenty five hundred. Nineteen ninety five, or sorry, nineteen eighty five. The nineteen ninety five, one in five hundred. 2001, 1 in 200, and then it goes all the way up to 2012, and now it shows uh, 1 in 80, and my understanding is as of 2016, it's 1 in 50, and uh, and there's yes. more and more people getting diagnosed with, with autism. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the, those are the statistics, so you managed to fish that out pretty quickly, you, you're going to be a great, you, you should be a good researcher, mate. <laughs> um, yeah. Really, no, seriously, and... Uh, and uh, also, so, of course, psychiatry. Uh, so you can get, uh, you know, symptoms that may may look like this, may look like that, um, which are really ju uh, often um, uh, the so-called side effects of psychiatric medicaments. And I'm just going to have to go and visit the Bogol just for a quick visit, and I'll be back in a jiffy. Cheers. Okay. 
Cheers. What what else do you guys usually talk about in these hangouts? Oh, uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Uh, whatever you wanna you wanna you've got something you wanna talk about, you know? Um I don't, I don't know. I, I was listening to the hangout and, and uh, some and he mentioned something about about uh, vaccines and I had an opinion on it, so I decided yeah. to come in the room and give my two cents, so to speak. Cool. Cool. I tell you one thing though, I can't wait until that movie actually comes out on DVD because I, yeah. I, I can't I can't watch it, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to order from Amazon or something because yeah. uh, Michael Moore recently made a movie it had nothing to do with vaccines. I think it's called uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Who do we invade next or or something like that? Yeah, I can't find I can't, I can't find it. it in, I can't find it at any of the retail stores, and the only way for me to even get that movie is by ordering online. So I'm That's pretty right, sure this whole. Yeah. Yeah, this whole Vax yeah. movie is going to be the same thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, anything like that, they won't sell if you look at Walmart or nothing, so. <laughs> what are you thinking about? I'm thinking it's very interesting that you came into this chat. That's what I was just thinking. And I was thinking, what else am I going to say? <laughs> 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 you know, sometimes I can come with some pretty long sentences, you know, and uh, yawn, yawn, people nod off. But uh, uh, sometimes I have to think about what I'm going to say as well because it's a very important issue, uh, very, very important issue, especially now today when uh, we're on the brink of having it forced on us. So... Uh, yeah, yeah, was, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of scared about that. I haven't had, and I'm telling you, I haven't had any vaccines for the past six years, and I haven't been healthier at any point in my life. I, I mean, have, I haven't gotten sick. I haven't. I mean, I've gotten like you know a sore throat and stuff like that, but I haven't. I never gotten the flu. I haven't had any serious illnesses, and and within the past six years, in the past six years, I never had any vaccine shots, and I'm just kind of afraid. I've heard about where people are saying that they're going to make it mandatory for like. Uh, I mean, I've heard you. Like you can't even get certain jobs without getting vaccinated right. and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, there have been uh, stories of nurses uh, refusing the vaccine and just leaving the job because they don't want to be have that that vaccine forced into them. And uh, uh, and then you have these these vaccine exemption forms as well. But yeah, no, um, might be useful. That might be useful in some type of situation. But uh, nevertheless, this. Uh, is coming our way. That's what they want, um, and I, I hope to help in preventing that from happening. Um, and I mean it. <laughs> I mean it very seriously. Also, another thing I would say: yeah, beware of um, controlled opposition uh, disinformation. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm interested to see that movie Vaxed as well. Although I don't have any great expectations for it because I'm sure, or I imagine from experience, <laughs> uh, that even that will have uh, some element of, uh, uh, you know, uh, they might, uh, I imagine, this is what I'm imagining, not having seen the documentary itself. Uh, I'm imagining they'll they'll point out dangers, some danger with maybe some specific vaccine, and then they'll they'll say, but there's nothing wrong with these other ones or something, you know. Right. Still have you vaccinated? That's the sort of thing I'm expecting. I might be, of course, completely wrong. Um, I haven't seen it. So, but Robert De Niro has already stated live on television uh, that uh, he's not a anti-vaxer. <laughs> Well, I think the I think the thing is is that I don't think anybody's anti-vaxxer. I think that's just kind of a label they put on people to kind of discredit what their arguments are. I mean, I'm I'm all for vaccines that work. I just think that we should actually, you know, do more studies on whether or not other you know individuals are more prone to certain types of side effects when it comes to vaccines. All right. Okay. Well. That's your choice. Uh, my personal opinion is that all vaccines are uh, bio-weaponry. And 
Um, that is my opinion, and I am an anti-vaxxer, anti-vaccination program, anti um, anything to do with any vaccine at all, because your immune system should work. Because if you had the right food to eat, as as human beings have had uh, for who knows, maybe millions of years. Um, let's go to the Amazons and sit, check. Mm, let's, where do you find the best immune systems? Uh, you go to the Amazons among uh, to the people, uh, some peoples there, and some other groups of uh, native or, or original indigenous peoples around and about the planet have got the best uh, uh, dental health. Uh, they've never heard of fluoride. They've got the the best immune systems. They've uh, and they've never heard of cancer. They've never heard of autism. They've never heard. They've, they don't even know what it is. It obviously, yeah. you, you need to come to the modern so-called civilized world to experience that. Now that for me demonstrates something profound. Yeah, I, I understand that, but but you would agree that if vaccines were effective like they say it is, you wouldn't be against that, would you? I mean, not to say that they are or anything, but if they did have a vaccine that did have benefits, would you be against that? Mm, interesting. Interesting question. If they had a vaccine, uh, I think that, that uh, you know, I've lived on the streets even in three different countries. And I've played in rich man's houses as well in three different countries. So I've seen the spec uh, different spectrums of society. Um, I'm thinking, when I've been living on the streets, I've had a lot of dodgy, sh uh, dodgy shite uh, offered to me, right? And I turned it down. <laughs> so they might uh, they claim that it might be good for you. Why would I want something that's good for me if I have real food? that is uh, giving nutrition to my body so that it can function properly. But seeing as we don't have real food in this modern so-called civilized world, uh, how is uh, how is the body going to get the nutrition it needs to function properly? So I would suggest to anyone offering me anything uh, that uh, I would say this more or less the same thing. I want to see a real vegetable and I want to eat it and I'm going to be fine. And you'll probably be fine too. Uh, because uh, bio-warfare has been going on for a long time. Those, those people who believe the smallpox blankets was an accident might want to uh, look at both the Australian smallpox blanket scenario that happened and the American one. Um, you know, uh, bio-warfare is thousands of years old knowledge. This has been going on in one form or another for thousands of years and uh, usually coming from the same basic sources. So that, I mean, without being very specific there, um, those are the observations I, I have regarding uh, that. But of course, I mean, if, uh, you know, I mean, I see your point. I mean, you know, if it's good for you, oh yeah, it's good for you. Why would I want something that's good for me if I already have what I need from nature? So that's my answer. And I need, uh, I need something that's bad for me too, actually. So I'm going to light up a cigarette. <laughs> um, well, of course. I mean, I'm, I'm. You know, it's your choice what you want to do. Uh, if you believe, you know, I mean, that's something everybody has to figure out for themselves. I'm not here to tell you not to vaccinate. I'm here to just tell you that the reasons that I will refuse any vaccine and like yourself I, I haven't had a vaccine for years now uh, some of the best health well, well I've had the best health in the last few years of my life than my entire life staying far away far away from big pharma uh, vaccination programs and all the rest of it and getting as natural food as possible so Proofs in the pudding, you know, they say. <laughs> Proofs in the yeah. pudding, and when you test that pudding, you get to see the effects of that pudding. Yeah, I guess. I'm, I'm just saying if there was, like, a, like a vaccine that was effective, I mean, I, I'd be all for that. But and I'm, and I'm pretty sure not all vaccines have the same sort of side effects that a lot of people are experiencing. And who's to say... Hmm. what sort of vaccines are good for you and what sort of vaccines aren't type of a thing. I just think that just be, 
I, I just think that all the research I see on the benefits of vaccines is that they're all done in laboratories and they see like results in like petri dishes and stuff, but yeah. they're not taking into consideration the type of uh, different types of immune immune systems that other people have, yes. and they're not actually going by what type of side effects different individuals that may occur. And I think that, that they should actually look more into that. But that's just, again, I'm not a scientist or anything, but that's just my opinion. Well, you don't need to be a scientist to use your nut. And, uh, you know, do these scientists really have such better brains than us? I don't think so. There are some things that are just logical and obvious uh, without having to be a scientist as well. But, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I mean, just common sense. Common sense can give you. You can give yourself a lot of answers to a lot of questions just by using that good old nut. That the, everyone is, seems to be relying more and more on the, the alleged expert's opinion, the expert for this, yeah. expert for that. Where or, or, can you even, you know, not you, but I mean, um, I think a lot of uh, to a lot of people. Hey, hey, excuse me. Can you even think for yourself anymore? I mean, I meet the one person after the other who who spouts out some. Uh, something they read somewhere or something without double checking it, without looking any deeper, without questioning anything. In a world where people have stopped questioning um, the stories given to us, well, that's very dangerous. Um, so I hope to inspire, at, le at the very least, you know, to bring out that question mark and apply it to a whole bunch of stuff going on uh, in contemporary times. Simple as that. Also, another channel you can check out is MG. Yes, Mr. Grimby. He yeah. does a lot of good stuff, too, on the vaccines and everything. Uh, cancer and all kinds, of, all kinds of stuff, too. So. Yeah, and I would also recommend looking into the history and mindset of eugenics and how that has morphed into yes. modern-day genetics. Uh, that will certainly, um, for me, that is, at the very least, is it's very important in understanding their intentions, where they're coming from, and so on and so forth. For those, for those people who think that uh, eugenics died out with Hitler in the Second World War, they really haven't uh, seen the half of it. So uh, um, that's meant as a as a big hint. Uh, uh, you might want to look at people like uh, people like uh, what's his name, Sir Francis Galton, I think his name was. Uh, one of the Darwins, uh, the Darwin Wedgwood family, and all this bunch. They were all related to each other. Connected to the Fabian Society eventually as well. That family and uh, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing is one of their favourite symbols. <laughs> I'm looking for some more tobacco. Yeah, I've got a bit more there. And I'm going to have to uh, close down this broadcast in a minute because, or go off air in a minute because I think I need to eat something. <laughs> so, but I can always go off air and yeah. we can continue if, if anyone feels like hanging out a little bit more. And I can stuff yeah. my face with some bread at the same time. <laughs> oh, we, what do you mean? We're, we're on air, people can see us? Yeah, but I mean, if that if that's difficult for you, I mean, I'm just I'll probably just delete the video anyway. Uh, I'm, I won't be keeping the video. It records automatically to YouTube. I don't know how to change it either, but I'll probably just go and, and delete it straight away. Actually, so so you don't have to worry about that. But we are live now. Yeah, uh, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> well, that's kind of cool. How many people are watching? Yeah, no, I think we were up to uh, the most about. I saw five there at one moment, so it's not yeah. like. Uh, um. It's not like um, <laughs> yeah. we're broadcasting to the entire world or anything, but you know, even if one or two are there, I'm happy broadcasting anyway. So, uh, you know, I really never really wanted to get into this type of broadcasting, or, or I mean, I was doing internet radio before, but I, but I felt you know what could see where things are going and. Uh, I thought, well, somebody has to do something and I can't expect anybody else to do it, so I had to do it myself as best as I could. And I'm, I'm not a trained speaker, I'm not a club member, I'm not a scientist either. Uh, but I have a noodle that still works to some degree. <laughs> so uh, just uh, doing my best. Uh, 
but now I've, I've taken a step back because uh, even the alternative media, and this is speaking by experience, having gone through different stations, being guests and, and collaborated with many different individuals around this planet, uh, it became even more obvious to me uh, how controlled even the alternative media is as well. And yeah, luckily there are exceptions to that. And uh, it's just something to be aware of that I keep repeating. And uh, I'm going to close off the, the broadcast section. And uh, that'll be all for now from Mysterious Labyrinth. Ping! Hi! Hey, did any of you get. Oh, sorry.